to Search the Dark Five with search engine optimization and marketing expert Robert O'Haver and Michelle Stinson Ross. Powered by the Robert Palmer family of companies. Good day and welcome back to Search Talk Live. I'm your host, Robert O'Haver, and we have a special guest co-host today. She hasn't been on in a while, but Michelle Stinson Ross. Michelle, how are you? I am good. I'm glad to be back. I am glad to have you back. <laughs> so so people that don't know about you, tell us a little bit about yourself. I am the marketing operations director at a full stack digital marketing agency based in Austin, Texas. I am with a company called Apogee Results. And along with doing client work, I am also part of the business development team. I go all over the country teaching people about digital marketing. And this year, a lot of it happens to be, <gasps> yay, about influencer marketing. So I'm really excited about this topic. Nice. And you're you do a lot of traveling. I mean, you're at pretty much all the conventions, right? I am. Pr if if Digital Summit is there, I am likely to be there. Um, <laughs> I just I just did two trips last month for Digital Summit, and I'm about to start a long six week travel stint going hither, thither, and yon. So Michelle will be in a city near you very soon. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. So I'm going to be in Minneapolis, Napa, Los Angeles, and Duluth before this next round of travel ends. Nice. So you're going to wear your Search Talk Live t-shirt? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I would if you would send me one, Robert. I'll do that. <laughs> well, today, guys, we're going to talk a little bit uh kind of a math i'd like to make it kind of a mix up we uh we do talk a lot about search uh seo uh on this show but we also cover many other things uh social media we cover paid advertising we try to give a little bit of flavor for everyone and today uh we're going to be talking about seo and uh influencer marketing so i think it's a good mat i know those are kind of two separate topics but they can be mashed together like I can't wait to dive in it with our guest. Um, but our guest today is Shane Berker. Shane is a marketing consul uh, SEO consultant as well, right? Marketing, I guess we could yep. encompass it. But uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I know it's always hard. I've, I've been in this space for 20 years in regards to digital marketing. So it's titles are always a challenge, right? Because you're like, well, you do SEO. Yeah, I've done SEO. Yeah, influencer marketing. Yeah, I do that too. And some consulting. So it's like, how do you tie that into a name that doesn't have like, you know, 46 <laughs> words that people are like, I'm so confused in what this guy's done. But yeah, so I, I've been in the SEO space for a long time for, you know, before it was even called SEO. So we have good experience with that. But really influencer marketing is really where we really excelled in the last probably six years. I've been writing about it on Inc. and Forbes for the last six years. And I also teach a course at UCLA, which is a personal branding and how to be an influencer course. Um, and actually, in two days, I have my first conference for agencies where we're teaching them how to work with influencers that we're doing in San Francisco. So nice. um, lots of fun stuff on the influencer space. And I'm excited about talking with you guys about it today. Yeah. So uh, if uh, what's your Twitter handle if people want to reach you on Twitter or something? Yeah. So it's just uh, Shane, S-H-A-N-E underscore Barker. That's B-A-R-K-E-R. -E and your website? My website is shanebarker.com. Keep it easy. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's e easy enough. And then I also have, um, if you go on Instagram, it's just Shane Barker. You can look me up there as well. Nice. All right. Well, let's dive into it, man. Um, I kind of, I, I know we didn't talk much before the show, but I do want to, I wanted to kind of do a mashup as well. Like, you know, combining SEO and influencer marketing together and kind of how influencer marketing can actually help your, your SEO efforts. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think there's there's always there's a number of ways that can play in together. I mean, a lot of people don't think that there's a correlation between SEO and influencer marketing, um, but there absolutely is. I mean, there's um, if you talk about doing a campaign, there's a number of different platforms you can do campaigns off, obviously. But if you're doing it on Instagram, there's not a huge SEO play with Instagram. Um, right. I mean, you can drive traffic. So if you're an influencer and there's one place to put a link in there. It's obviously very valuable real estate for any brand or that's working with an influencer. If you're able to get your link in there, obviously through the affiliate side of things, and it can also drive traffic, that's not necessarily going to be a huge SEO play. But if you're looking from an SEO perspective, um, anytime you're putting anything on 
on this thing that they've called YouTube. You might have heard of it. Um, <laughs> it's like the second largest search engine in the world, so, or not maybe in the world, but at least in, in, the, in the States. Um, the thing is about that is that you know, if you have influencers that are creating content for you, um, there is a way to optimize that content, right? Whether it be uh, unboxing, whether it be uh, reviews, whether somebody's doing, um, you know, just talking about the, the, the product or service that you have. Uh, from an influencer perspective, there's definitely ways to optimize that content. So anytime you're putting in any kind of video content up, as I'm sure you guys have talked about on the podcast in the past, is there's ways to optimize that, right, for certain keywords and stuff like that. If anybody goes into YouTube and says, hey, I'm looking for whatever it is, influencer marketing, then you really should have influencer marketing in your description and your, uh, the, you should rename the file of the actual video, right, so that's also in there for keyword searches. And then the same thing with your title. Um, you should have that in your title as well. So, you know, that's one thing to produce content. It's another thing to produce content with with an end goal. Um, if the end goal is to, hey, to be to be found on search when it comes to, you know, I and mean, we understand that Google, obviously, any kind of video stuff that gets put on YouTube, because obviously they're a little bit in bed, right? They might not always admit that, but I don't see too many Vimeo, like, videos that are number one over any of the YouTube videos. So my thing would be, hey, like, put it on YouTube, optimize it. Um, and make sure that when you have that content out there, you're putting it out there with a purpose with keywords in mind. Right, right. You know, one thing I see a lot of on Instagram, too, is, uh, you know, you might see a, a picture with Kim Kardashian and she's wearing a specific necklace. And that uh, an e-commerce store might sell that exact same necklace somewhere. And then they'll, you know, use that to kind of look, Kim Kardashian's wearing, you know, type <laughs> Yeah. Well, and they, they do that the same with this, this shirt industry. So what they'll do is, you know, there's a lot of ways to, what people do is the drop shipping situation, right? So you'll have a shirt that says, you know, Leo's are the best, right? And then what it shows is a picture of some celebrity. They put that shirt on them and then they'll go do some advertising and everybody thinks that Vin Diesel is wearing this shirt. This is Leo's are the best. And then they'll go and sell it for a month, two months, six months or whatever until, you know, somebody's from, you know, from Vin Diesel's camp come and says, hey, he never wore that shirt. And we go, oh, sorry about that. We'll take it down. And they take it down. So, <laughs> yeah, there, there's a lot of ways that, you know, some some funnier ways, I guess, and um, that you can, that people are leveraging that when it comes to what other people are wearing, either A, putting that on them or saying, yeah, that was a necklace that came from, you know, our company or whatever it was. It's stretching the truth just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Michelle? You there? Yes, I'm there. <laughs> and honestly, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, wow, Kim, one of the things that I frequently find in talking about influencer marketing is really helping people expand what they consider an influencer to be. And I know that this crosses into SEO quite a bit because we can say, well, yeah, sure. An Instagram influencer, obvious, right? A YouTuber is obvious. Um, obviously, for a long time, we've had celebrity endorsements, like you were talking, of course, that wasn't a real endorsement, but if we can ape it, sure, why not? But honestly, I'm also finding that we can loop old school PR into our um, influencer marketing as well, and getting those news mentions and other web mentions and contributing kind of like we're doing here. So in this case, you, our guest, is are an influencer in this space and you're now doing a podcast with us. There's a lot of other ways that we can look at influencer marketing and really what I tell a lot of my audiences and you can tell me whether you feel like this works or not. But as anybody that has cultivated an audience that kind of matches your brand, they could be an influencer for you. Am I right? 100%. I mean, that's what, that's the beauty of the whole thing is that influencer marketing, it, you don't, it doesn't have to be, they don't have to have a million followers or they don't have to, they, I mean, a lot of the B2B play is working with people. And the fact that you called me an influencer, uh, I'm going to have to get a, obviously a copy of this and I'm going to send this to my mother because <laughs> that's super exciting. Cause I was like, wow, I just, I told my mom I'd make it one day. I just didn't know this podcast was going to be that point that catapulted me into being an influencer. So that's awesome. Um, but yeah, it really comes down to anybody that has some type of a following online and then has influence over them, right? That, that has, the, you know, they can help. These people are making buying decisions. And let's say if I'm that person and I talk about a certain software or, I mean, we've done stuff just recently where, you know, I've had LinkedIn that's reached out that we'll put together content together, right? So there's a lot of ways to, from a B2B play, not always just B2C, but there's a lot of that that's happening out there where two brands are going to get together and say, hey, you've got a great following. 
Um, you work with like for LinkedIn as an example. Hey, you work with entrepreneurs, you work with small businesses, medium sized businesses. You do talks, you do this. You would be kind of a good advocate or you know somebody that can be an ambassador, really an influencer. Um, and we really want you to talk about like the platform and talk about the new features that we have going or something like that. Um, I have another good friend of mine, Ryan, um, that just has a thing going with Microsoft. Microsoft is hitting it really big, to really pushing some of their products. And so what they did is him as an influencer, they came and said, hey, we want you to um, really put together some content. It's going to be all through Twitter. We're looking for whatever, 10 posts um, or whether they be videos or whatever. And they obviously worked out an agreement. And so now Ryan talks about how he's using you know this new feature on, on on one of Microsoft's products to be able to push it. So you know the business, the B two B play is really really big, um, and a lot of the times it's I mean it's no different. It's always been around, right? We've always had kind of this this thing where brands of you know where somebody will you know has a car or whatever Toyota has a car and they want to go to somebody. I mean that's a B two B play when you have those those type of relationships. Um, but now what it is is that you have an opportunity that really anybody can be an influencer. It's not just somebody on Instagram. I mean, it can be bloggers, it can be reporters, it can be, there's, there's so many, that's what's crazy about it is that there, you know, let's say 10 years ago, there was a thousand influencers, whatever we dub that an influencer is. Now there's hundreds of thousands, if not millions, right? So that's where people go. There's a, there's been some stuff with the fire festival and all, whatever that, all that fun stuff. People are like, oh, but you gotta be really careful. Oh, this, that, and the other. Oh, it's going away. Influencer marketing is not going away. So let me just no. I'm gonna say that one more time for emphasis. It is not going away. The reason why is because you have more and more people that have influence, right? And there's and for a product or a service, there's more and more options out there, which is awesome. I mean, there's a there's a point that's been the last few years where you've seen some crazy pricing, right? Like the Kim K's of the world getting a million dollars and this kind of stuff. It's because they're they're constantly in the media. They're constantly they they know how to pay, play the PR game. Right. So there's always mm -hmm. some kind of drama with the Kardashians for a reason. Right. Maybe because their life's crazy or maybe it's because, you know, mom's pulling some strings and making sure that we keep the media excited about everything that's going on. Like there's there's always another level. Right. So right. that's one side of influencer marketing. It's one side where people see that and they go, yeah, that's a crazy price. But what's cool about that is if you're looking for and I say normal influencers and I mean people that aren't going to ask for a million dollars a post, there's all kinds of people out there like that. Right. And there's all kinds of people that you can do a collaboration with. And one of the things is I bring this up, one thing you have to realize, too, is that when you're working with influencers, people go, what do I not, what do I offer an influencer? Well, you have to assume every influencer is their own business. So it's not one thing that you offer every influencer. Right. So that's what you have to look at as well is like I might be a T-shirt company and my shirts, let's say they retail at one hundred dollars and I go up to an influencer that's got half a million followers and say, hey, I'd love to give you a free T-shirt if you'd go do a, a, a six minute video for us. They're like, okay, well, hold on. So six minute video with myself as an influencer. I have my video team. I have my photographer there. I've got my, my, my boom guy. I've got this. I've got that. It's going to cost me 10 grand to do that video. And you want to give me a hundred dollar t-shirt. Huh? Let me think. No, that's probably not going to work. Right. So it, it really comes down to, you know, it, it come, each influencer is looking for something different. And it's important when I send outreach emails, first of all, I want to make sure it's a good fit for the brand, right? That's really important. Mm -hmm. But second, I want to see where they're at, right? I do interviews. So I like to work with the, the bigger brands that have got kind of really unique products that are patented. And we've got some really cool stuff. Like one of them is this scooter that has an AI brain that we're coming out with. It's like this super stealth project out of Singapore. But if you look at my Instagram, you, you might get an idea of who they are because I probably talked about them when I was in Singapore two weeks ago. But <laughs> the, the idea of this thing is, is that it's, is when you're pitching, when you're talking to these influencers, realize that not everybody's the same and that you want to, you don't want to pigeonhole yourself in regards to what kind of content they're going to produce because they usually, usually know what their audience likes, right? Content wise, because they've built up that audience and they know when they put up these types of pictures, it doesn't perform well. But when I do these types of pictures or when I do an Instagram story or when I do this, then it's like a it's a better situation for you know people to to better understand like it's better you can come up with content together that is going to be a win win for both sides mm -hmm. and I think that's something that a lot of people overlook. Yeah. Right. Well, and one of the things I've noticed is I've I've gotten people to start thinking about okay what is the value exchange. Yeah. Sometimes that's going to be a paid contract where I pay you X amount of dollars and you do X Y and Z right. But for some of these smaller influencers and, and, and getting to your point that, well, maybe some of the data that I collect as a business is highly valuable and will save them a lot of time in creating that next piece of content. 
that's a value exchange. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, you sitting here with us and per, you know, and sharing some of your expertise, that's a value exchange. Yeah. So at some point, we not only do we need to expand our definition of what an influencer could be, but we might also need to expand the definition of what that value exchange is because not all of it has to be cash or product. And that's exactly it. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I, I What you have to figure out in the situation is how do we make it a win-win? Mm-hmm. Right, and that is a value exchange. It's exchanging value, like we say as an example. You guys have me on the show today, and if you guys, you know, it said, "Listen, you know, I, you guys didn't have an audience, and nothing was going on." Then I, you know, is there a value exchange? Or is, it, is it worth it for me to spend my, you know, one hour today to to be on the podcast? There's a value exchange for me, right? Because I understand that how big the, the the listenership that you guys have is, and there's there's value for both sides. So I go, "Hey, that's worth my hour's time," and you guys go, "Hey, Shane has an audience as well, so it's a win win for both sides." Right. What happens is, is a lot of people, when they pitch influencers, they're thinking about themselves, right? And they're like, I'm going to offer them a hundred dollar t-shirt. This person has the most epic content. They get 10,000 likes, they get whatever, a thousand comments, like just, they're a great influencer. And once I give them that hundred dollar shirt, they're going to be like, man, you're awesome. And if you, they have that type of content, you have to realize that as an influencer, not all of them, but if you love their content, they're putting out the super epic content. They're probably not a one person show. Right. They're probably they're probably made this into a business. And that's one of the questions that I ask when I talk to influencers. I we have qualifying questions. Right. Because what I want to do as a brand, I want to I want to flip it on an influencer. I want them to think I want them to exp- I want to explain to them why me reaching out to them is important for them to really take seriously, because we interview the influencers. We want to make sure it's a good fit and we're here to crush the campaign. Right. So I kind of it's almost like a takeaway. Like when I'm sending out emails, I'm like, I'm going to give you the opportunity to work with this brand. And it's a little bit of a this little bit of a mind change, right? Because if I'm saying, "Hey, will you please work with us? Please work with us," then they're like, "Yeah, that's right. They want me, right?" I I kind of flip it a little bit. I kind of go, "Hey, there's. Let me tell you why you, we think you're a great fit, but we're also looking for the, the the right type of influencer. Would you be open for an interview?" And now they're kind of trying out for the position, which is a little bit. And once again, it depends on the product and service and stuff. But that's the way I like to drink because I, I want to make sure that it's a win win. I want them to get on the call, and I'm going to say, "Listen." I've got, a, whatever, 100 influencers that I'm talking with. I'm looking to pick up 25 of them. And I just want to make sure this is a good fit for you and for us. It's not just about the brand, sure. right? Because if it's not a good it's not a good fit for your audience, and why do it? I mean, that's people talk about influencer marketing not working. Influencer marketing doesn't work if you don't have the right audience. You can have the best product in the world. Same thing with SEO and PPC. Best product in the world, you're going after the wrong target audience. Best whatever content you're putting out there, but you don't. it's not SEO driven or you don't have you know, you're not indexing for certain things or the right keywords, mm-hmm. it's not going to go well. Like I, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter, put anything into that. Like influencer marketing is only going to be successful if you have the right, right audience and you're partnering with the right influencers and you put the right content together. It's not a, Hey, just go have an influencer because they have a half million followers, giving them 10 grand, having them put up one picture and just watch the money come flowing in. There's strategy behind this. What people have to realize, it's not just going to happen overnight. Like if you think you're going to put your $50,000 budget into influencer marketing, hire 10 influencers, pay them, you know, whatever, $5,000 a piece. They all put up one picture and then you go to the Bahamas um, and drink Corona as all the money comes flying in. It's not that way. It's a strategy. This is one piece of your marketing mix that's out there, but you have to put the time and the effort in. It's influencer marketing is, is it takes time. And the mm-hmm. problem is in the past, what they've done, people that really weren't looking at ROI, they said, hey, they got a great following. They're cute, whatever it is. And I think it's a great fit. I'm just going to have them put out a piece of content and then we'll just see what happens. The problem is if you're working with the bigger influencers, there's there's usually a good amount of money that's being exchanged there. And if you don't know how to do influencer marketing, you don't have at least the basics of like an agreement, a brief in place, talking about KPIs, right? Like what is my key performance indicators, right? Like what is my goal? Right. Because an influencer's goal could be to do this and the brands could be to do that. And when they don't mix up, then there's a problem at the end of the campaign when the brand says, hey, I was you know looking for that reporting. And they go reporting like I don't even (laughs) talk about. Right. (laughs) I'm successful. And I go, well, whoa, whoa, like I didn't you know, I didn't know. I mean, it's like getting married. And then all of a sudden you and your wife are sitting down and she's like, well, you know, we probably want to have kids, kids in the next year or two. And you're like, whoa, that wasn't on your profile. Like, I think we should probably should have talked. I don't want to have kids. You're like damn, that sucks. We just got married two weeks ago. Right. I mean, I'm being facetious, but my point is, is like, it's important to have that communication because 
one thing that we we assume is that influencers, because they know their audience and they know what kind of content their audience likes, doesn't mean that they're marketers either. Right. Yeah. So that's a very right. big misconception is like you jump in and assume that this influencer is a marketer and they're not. Right. And so that's where the brands that's why on, on my side right now, we're working heavy, heavy on the education because that's what it is. It becomes an education play. Like I want to give you enough knowledge as an agency, like a thing we're doing in San Francisco. I want to give you enough knowledge so that you can go and ask the right questions of these influencers. Cause there's a lot of influencers out there. And then obviously at UCLA, we have, I work with influencers. Like how do you put a media kit together? Like how do you go and pitch brand, big brands and explain to them why you need to be working together? Right. Right. And it's an education thing. Cause most brands don't know which influencers work with. Cause you know how they find them. They go and look, they've got a huge social media following and they go or read about them in an article. They must be good. That's the person I have to go with. Cause they've got a half million <laughs> followers and I've got 10 grand this is going to be a match made in heaven. I just know it. It's that the followership is, that's how we've gotten into fake followers and all this kind of stuff. Because mm -hmm. we, yeah. we have brands that say, hey, listen, and brands didn't know any different. It's not their fault. What they did is said, hey, if you have 10,000 followers, I'll give you a thousand bucks. But if you have 50,000, I'll give you 5,000. But if you have 250,000, I'm going to give you $25,000. And guess what happens? People go, let's sing. Uh, it's taken me a year to get 10,000. But if I can get to 250000 and I can buy it on Fiverr, that would cost me $400. I could do that by next week. This is awesome. <laughs> right? Now, not everybody's doing that, but you get my point. Like, If you put an incentive out there to potentially fudge the system, people are going to do that. I'm not saying all influencers do that mm -hmm. by any means. Yeah. But you get caught in a situation where would you rather get $5,000 or twenty five? Now, what influencers don't realize is that when you go and do that, you totally screw up your numbers. Yeah. Right now, I look at engagement, you look at all this other stuff, you've got you know, 250,000 followers and you're getting you know, 14 likes and two comments and both of those comments are your mom, <laughs> right? That's, not, right. that's pro probably not gonna get hired, right? But that's where we have software and stuff where you can go and look at, uh, you know, at, at different things that are happening with influencers, look at engagement rates. I always tell people, but don't ignore the eyeball test. Like, I started off so long ago in this industry that influencer marketing was an Excel spreadsheet. That's how I started. Like, literally, <laughs> there was no software. Like, the software they have today, it's like, I don't even know how to handle it. Like, I feel like when I have people on my team that are using the software, I'm like, you don't even, you don't even know what I had to deal with. I had to walk in the snow, both, both hills to walk to school. And they're like, I don't even know what that means. And I'm like, you know, never mind. Just use the software. <laughs> right? I mean, for me, it was an Excel spreadsheet. Like, that's how we... That's how we put this stuff together. And so the, what I mean by the eyeball test is go and look at the, the influencer's content. Software will give you some numbers and stuff, but it's really an eyeball test. Looking at the influencer's profile and saying, what kind of vibe do they give off? Are they, do they always talk about political stuff or abortion? Not, you know, stuff that, that that's, I don't want to be associated with. You really have to make that evaluation. Don't always look at the numbers. And most brands... Even today, look at the numbers. That's their big thing is like they have this number. They must be great. And that's just you got to be careful. And you also have to use common sense, too. You know, like if for, for demographics, like let's say you might not want to advertise to Justin Bieber's followers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it might be a younger crowd depending on what you're selling. But uh, you have to that's look a, at that as well. That's a great point. I'll give you a, a quick little example. So we had. Zoe Rodriguez is one of my original influencer marketing clients. We got her from, she came to me doing 400,000 a year in sales, which she was a one person team. And she was like, she felt like she was doing terrible. And I'm like, this girl's clearing $30,000 and her, her overhead is literally a gym membership. Um, right. I mean, plus the content she was creating, I'm not making it seem like she was lazy because she was awesome. And we got her to 1.6 million in a year's time, all through influencer marketing. But what was funny about Zoe is so she was a fitness person and this was, I mean, this is probably six years ago. Now we had another one, another fitness influence. I won't say her name because the campaign didn't go as well as we'd like. And I don't want to put her on blast, but sure. what happened was we didn't have software, but she had 3 million followers. Zoe came to us at 180,000 and we got her up to just under half a million um, in a year's time. We spent about three or 400,000 on influencer marketing. And this was all that software. This was me literally at the Christmas table negotiating with influencers because it was the hot time. And my grandma and my wife and my mom were all giving me the stink eye. And I had to go to the bathroom like 36 times just to go in there and negotiate with influencers because that's how we did it. Like it was all just through apps and stuff like that. So it was not a popular Christmas between my family because they're like, why are you on your phone this whole time? I'm like, because it's Christmas time and we and the fitness season is coming and nobody in my whole family understood that. But anyways, <laughs> the, the point of the whole of me telling you this whole story was 
one of these, this fitness influencer had 3 million followers. And we thought, God, if Zoe at 180 is doing whatever, 400,000, this girl's going to do 10 million. Like, we just know it. So we put together this whole thing. We put together um, all of these ebooks, new website, everything. Re- redid everything, shot it out. We got like, I was like $500 in sales. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, this thing should be crushing it. Well, when there's this stuff called software that you guys have heard of more recently, when I went and when softwares finally came out, we went and looked at her demographics. Well, she, because she was very beautiful and she put up some risky pictures and she was still very intelligent and boxer and all this other fun stuff. She, she had an 85% male following. Well, who's going to want to buy a female centric ebook about <laughs> fitness? Right. There was a huge disconnect, but we, we were looking at numbers. And once again, this was six years ago, mm-hmm. we didn't have software to really know what the demographic ba- breakdown does. I mean, Instagram wasn't even really giving demographic breakdowns and we had like a Kano square and some other stuff that we kind of looked at, but it really didn't break it down. And so here we are, we put all this money into this, this 50, 50 relationship. Hey, we'll produce the content for free. We're going to knock this thing out of the park. Cause once again, I thought I was going to be in the Bahamas drinking a Corona and, you know, having hire somebody to count my money for me. Yeah. Um, didn't quite happen that way. We never got our money back on the whole project. But my point is, we were looking at the numbers, not looking at the demographic and, and really better understanding that. So that was our one faux pas. That's, you know, the thing that we later on were like, okay, now we learned from that. But that was definitely a situation where we assumed because of our followership that it was just going to be $10 million all day and it was going to be residual and this is going to be awesome. Nice. Well, Shane, we got to take a break real quick. When we come back right now, we're talking to Shane Barker, SEO consultant and, uh, When we come back, we're going to do Who's Influencing the Influencer. So we'll be right back. Today's episode of Search Talk Live is sponsored by... Directive is an industry-leading search marketing agency fully focused on helping B2B marketing teams increase their results. If you're looking to increase your marketing qualified leads and decrease your cost per acquisition for search engines, I'd highly recommend you take a look at their site. We've actually had their CEO, Garrett Marguth, on the show and I can honestly say these guys are doing some great stuff. I hear that they even have their own analytics system that lets you correlate your SEO, PPC, or content efforts directly to revenue. If you're a B2B company and thinking about switching agencies or if you're in-house and need help, I'd give Directive a look. Visit directiveconsulting.com or call 949-214-4024. Again, that's 949-214-4024. Again, that's directive at directiveconsulting.com. One of the major factors in ranking a website is quality backlinks to your site. There is much debate on what is the proper way to build links. Do it the wrong way and you could find yourself in a penalty. Follow best practices and your site could be rewarded by ranking higher in the search engines. As an SEO, it's very time consuming, along with the many other ranking factors you have to address on a website. You could spend days and months trying to get one quality backlink to your site. That is why I want to tell you about the No BS Marketplace. At NoBS, you can connect with over 10,000 digital publishers. By following link building best practices, you can take full control of your link building campaigns and make it more cost effective for your clients. At NoBS, they allow you to review publishers, approve content, and customize it to a whole new level, giving you the quality content that is so important. With pricing starting at just $100 per link, why not try a different way to build links? As a Search Talk Live listener, NoBS is offering you 20% off your first order. Just use promo code Search Talk Live to get started today. Go to NoBS.link. That is N O B S dot L I N K. Get your questions in on Twitter. Type hashtag Search Talk Live and your question. Now back to the show. All right, we're back. Now we're going to talk a little bit about who influences the influencer. And basically, uh, well, Shane, what this means is, you know, who do you follow? Who do you get, uh, you know, to get your insider information? I know you're an influencer, but we all have influences. <laughs> we do. We do. It, it's funny. So when I when I was kind of thinking about that or we going through the commercial, like for me, the because I, I, I do follow a lot of people. But the problem is there's so many platforms, you know, and I 
to have the time to like look at everybody else's stuff. Like I have to, you know, the push notification on Twitter is, is, is helpful sometimes so I can you know, get updated on some things. Yeah. But I would say, I mean, we talked a little bit of Rand Fishkin is, I've always been a fan of that. Start off obviously in the SEO space with Moz and uh, Spark Toro, uh, Spark Toro is, that, he's, that he's working on now in the influencer space. So I've always uh, valued the input that he puts out there just because he's always real genuine. Yeah. Um, and I think he's always, you know, he's, he's always kind of, uh, really been honest with himself with how he runs his companies and the way the things that he does. And I feel like he's always been um, like with the SEO side of things. He was always, you know, finding out information about Google and stuff, but was very much for the consumer as well. And always fought for the consumer. Um, and always, you know, like when they took away, you know, whatever it was, the, the, when Google took away, when you look up the keywords and stuff, and there was some stuff that happened there, he was very transparent about what he thought. And I just thought he was a real honest opinion in the, in the industry. Yeah. Um, Neil Patel, I, I, you know, has been doing it for, for a long time and his content, he was one of the first, I think, to produce content at scale, like really, really at scale where you started to get a, a huge followership. Um, and then Seth Godin has always been, you know, I've always enjoyed his books that he's put out there. And we've got like the Gary V's of the world, you know, Gary, I do like, and I yeah. know Gary, he's, He's um he's he's kind of a hype machine too, right? Which I'm not saying he's not intelligent by any means. He's extremely intelligent, but he's he's like if you get up in the morning and you're like, God, I just what am I gonna do today? You watch a little Gary V stuff, get a little shot of Gary V, and then next you know you're you'll run to work, you know, when you we're debating whether to <laughs> even go to work. So, you know, I mean, I think for different di- what I'm looking, you know, depends on what I'm looking for, but I, I, I different certain people that I follow for certain reasons. Right, depends yeah. on the mood, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's continue on our conversation here. One of the other things I was talking about with influence marketing, um, you know, I see a lot like, for instance, my podcast, you know, we get people writing stuff on search engine land and stuff and then uh, other people writing, you know, because we had such and such person on. That's a good example of influencer marketing. Uh, they'll link back to the show so you can listen to it. And that, to be honest with you, that wasn't something I intentionally did. I, I don't want to, yeah. t- I don't want to take credit for it. I was the main reason I started this show is to get the good information out there because there's so much bad stuff out there. You yeah. Know? But, uh, well, it, yeah, I was going to touch on that. I mean, that is, that is, even though that wasn't a, an intentional play that that's absolutely out there. I mean, yeah. the thing, once you get a podcast to the size of where you have it, is then you can be very strategic about your partnerships, sure. right? So you, what you want to do, I mean, obviously what you guys I'm sure are doing is you go and look at certain, certain influencers and say, okay, where does their audience, where do they write? You know, what kind of promotions have they done for other podcasts in the past? I mean, you are literally looking for influencers, no different than if I was to go find an influencer for a brand, we go sure. look at their content, we go look at what they're putting out and I want to make sure that they're a good resource. So they're going to be, a, there's going to be a good partnership there because you having me on the show is a partnership, right? Mm-hmm. Because what I should be doing is I should be I should be doing the promotions on my side. I should be talking about it on you know whatever Twitter, whatever I do, wherever I put my promotions out. It's important because then that's a win win for both sides, right? We sure. have that value that value trade that's happening. And so, you know, when you talk about you know one of some of the things that we talk about when we work with influencers and brands is like having that brief in place of saying, hey, listen, this is a hashtag to use. This is this. This is usually what we look at. No different than your podcast. Like, hey, this is usually what we talk about. Usually, you know, people send these kind of promotions out. What we're looking for is this. That way, the brief kind of tells me, hey, what we're looking for. If I want to commit to the podcast, how this can be a win-win. It also gives me suggestions on where I can talk about it. Hey, t- people have talked about it here, talked about it there. And that that's how you grow your podcast. That's how I people get to hear about Shane Barker, but also the people that follow Shane Barker can learn about your podcast. Right. So it's that it's when you guys both bring something to the table when 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 really good things happen. Mm -hmm. Well, and this kind of takes us into something I've been thinking a lot is the relationship between link building that we've been doing for years and years and years and years and influencer marketing, because that those those are things that fit in together. It's like if we're going to spend the time to create content like we're doing now with the podcast or if we did like a Facebook live event or something, that time creating that type of content why shouldn't it turn into written content with a link back to all of the relevant things, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I I look at link building as a piece of the influencer marketing picture as well. Is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it absolutely is. That's the thing is that you you have this is what happened. So influencer marketing six years ago, you would I could just pick up a little thing, a creatine. And say, hey, go buy XYZ creatine. It's really great, right? And for the most part, people would respond. For the most part. Mm-hmm. 
these days it's very different, right? So what I mean by that is that when we talk about a strategy behind something, you, you have to figure out what you're looking for. So, hey, if you're looking for an SEO play, then you have to figure out how you're going to get a backlink involved there. You also have to figure out in these briefs and these agreements, hey, do I have the right to use that content that you produce and to be able to put PPC behind it or to write a blog article or have somebody else write a blog article about it? Hey, we want to go to Shane Barker who writes for 120 websites and he wants to do a case study on how whatever Amazon and XYZ company did this together or you know whoever that may be and then talk about that the successes of that campaign the goods and the bad so you just there's always just because you're putting up a piece of content it's no different than you put up a blog post right. how else am I going to what else am I going to do with that hey I'm going to make it into a PDF and I'm going to put it here I'm going to make it into an infographic and share it here hey I'm going to make it into where Shane does a a video and talks about you know the actual podcast then we're going to put it on YouTube we're going to optimize on there then we're going to put it on the page I mean there's you have to think about a piece of content and the same thing with influencer marketing. You're going to produce a piece of content and then what are you going to do to continue that campaign? If you just put up a piece of content and pray to sweet little baby Jesus that that thing goes off and takes off virally, that's not always going to happen. And right? there will be no I, Coronas on the beach for you. No Coronas and sweet little baby Jesus will not help you. I mean, that's <laughs> the thing is that you really need to, the idea is this is like, if I'm producing this piece of content, how do I keep it going? How do I put PPC ads behind it? How do I go and do whatever it is, or collage, whatever whatever you want to do with that, or putting it on my homepage for social proof, or that all comes in this brief or an agreement that you should have with the influencer on how you should, because you're paying for a piece of content to be produced. You need to have the rights to that content. Um, and that's another thing we look at. So you're talking about backlinks and saying, hey, I want to be able to get a backlink out of this. Once again, how do we make it a win-win? I know that you have a very big blog. You do this, you do that. So Shane, if I have you on the podcast, would you be willing to write up a little article talking about the podcast and what we did and stuff like that? And you include the backlink or the other side, you, you guys obviously having the podcast. Hey, I know that you guys want to put up the page. I'm going to market it. You guys are going to put on there how to get a hold of Shane. Here goes Shane's email address. Here goes the conferences. He's speaking up, you know, all the fun stuff. Mm -hmm. That's beneficial for me. That's going to index. Well, that's a great backlink and that can continuously drive traffic for me. Right. So that's why I spend time, hour, two hours, whatever it is on podcasts. And also because they're fun. I like chatting with people. But that's, you know, that's what you have to look at. It comes down to KPIs, it comes down to what is your goal? What is my goal of being on this podcast? Right. My goal is to get the word out, to educate people about influencer marketing so they do it the correct way. And your goal is to grab as many of my followers to come on the podcast, download some stuff, buy some link building services, whatever that is, whatever things that get to get sold after this. That way we're all working together, which two different goals, but it's it's still gonna be beneficial for both sides. Well, and I think that's why relevance plays a role here. So you talked quite a bit about making sure that, oh, aside from an influencer that just has a big audience, let's make sure that they're also relevant. They're relevant on topic. They're relevant on demographic. They're relevant in all of the right places. From an SEO perspective, all of that relevance that we made sure was in place before we engaged that influencer now comes into play on the back end of it, whether that is, you know, just the show notes from the podcast, just the links and shares from a social media video, whether that does become a blog article somewhere or maybe two or three blog articles somewhere or, oh my gosh, what if it actually got real press pickup, right? Because Shane yeah. just said something completely mind-blowing and amazing and now the rest of the industry press wants to talk about it as well. All of that is because we made sure that relevance was right in the first place. That's exactly it. I mean, it, that's really what it comes down to. It's, you know, we've had plenty of campaigns where, you know, brands have picked the wrong influencer because they see numbers and it really comes down. I, I would much rather have an influencer that has 5,000 followers that is relevant than somebody has half a million. I mean, just all day long. And if they're not, they're going to be also less expensive. They're probably going to be more apt to work with you because they probably haven't been pitched a lot in regards to campaigns and they want to, they want to have those great results. Well, and Google what? wants to see links coming back to all of these pages from rel from other relevant sites as well. There's that that topic validation that happens as well. Sure. Yeah, that's that's the core of the algorithm is like relevancy, right? Like it, it needs to be. I mean, I if I was going to get all these great, you know, domain authority 80s and get all you know these backlinks from sites that were, I mean, travel sites and all this other stuff that really doesn't have to do with my core business. That's not going to be beneficial. It's the same thing with influencers. I mean, it's. It from a backlink perspective, but just from selling your product or service, like 
do you think they are a good fit? Like your, your demographic is, this is the avatar of my perfect client. Is my perfect client following this influencer? Would they be following this influencer? And if so, why, right? Because it's heavy on the female side. Uh, we want them to be, they need to make X amount of a month or a year or whatever it is, drive this type of car. Like, I mean, we can dig down as, as far as we need to on the avatar. But the idea is, is your gut feeling that this is the right person. And I, I get brands that get, it's okay. So I also do, it's a whole other story. I also do real estate, wholesale real estate. And it's, I, when I, when I have these properties, I tell people like, when you're an investor, don't fall in love with the property. And I tell brands, don't fall in love with an influencer. Like you think they're the perfect influencer, but yet they want 50 grand for one post. And you're like, but we have to do it. I'm like, you don't because there's millions of influencers. Mm -hmm. Like don't like, if you don't think it's a right price. And I'm telling you right now, if you sell a $3 widget and you spend $50,000, you figure out how many widgets you have to sell to break even. It's a lot of widgets. And I don't even really know what a widget <laughs> is, but I just know that they're, they're, I know they're $3 and I know you just spent 50,000 and I think that's a bad widget play. Right? So that's what you have to look at is like the, cause that's, a, the, that's probably the second biggest question I get asked is how much should I pay an influencer? Like, what should I pay them? And the analogy that I always use is if you, if you believe if they give you a price and they tell you what the package is or what they're going to include with that, and you think that's a good deal, then it's a good deal, right? If you don't think it's a good deal, then it's not a good deal. And the analogy I always use is like a Babe Ruth, uh, like a card, like a baseball card, right? And so let's say I have a, an original and Babe Ruth signed it himself, right? And there's only three of these in the world. And they say, um, you know, all the, the popular websites say that's it's worth $3 million all day long. Like just don't, don't even take anything less. And I hold on to it and I want to buy a house. And I'm like, wow, that'd be really cool if I could sell this. And somebody says, hey, I know you have one of those Babe Ruth baseball cards that's signed. Um, I'll give you 250,000. And I go, wow, yeah, but it's worth 3 million. And they go, well, but who's going to buy it for 3 million? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you know, so it's, it's all, it's all, it's a supply and demand thing. So if you can either hold out and you can hold out and find that person to, to buy it for 3 million, or you give it to your, your kids and they try to go find somebody and then somebody loses it in an accident, whatever. My point is, is you, it all becomes down to, do you think that's a good deal? And if I say 250,000 is way better than a Babe Ruth birth or a card that I have in my safe, and now I can put money down on a house. And that, to me, that's, there we go. That makes sense to do that. Same thing with influencer marketing. If you look at a campaign, influencer says, hey, for $20,000, I will do um, a video. I will do this. And they have a detailed plan. And I go, wow, that's a lot of content. And I'm looking at all this content. What do I think the impressions are going to be? What do I think if I push them to this certain landing page, which converts at 3%, then I, you know, it looks like I could probably get 50,000 people from there. If I'm converting at 3%, hopefully you're not selling a $3 widget. Hopefully you're selling a $10,000, you know, e-course online. All you have to do is convert four people. Then it makes sense, right? It really just comes to like breaking this thing down. If sales are your thing, reverse engineer it. Yeah, That's mm -hmm. what you have to look at. Like, does that make sense? If you have a gut check, and it doesn't make sense, then it doesn't make sense. Don't jump on something because of somebody's followership or because you read about them in an article. It has to be a good fit. The cool part is if you don't work with them, this just in, there's millions of other influencers. Yes. Yeah. Millions of them, right? It needs to be a good fit. Don't force something. Yeah, you can literally find what you're looking for <laughs> if you have a, like a specific demographic, if you have a specific any, interest. Any. It is crazy. Let's put it this way. I was in, I did one of the first um, influencer marketing summits in Mexico. There was a guy there. His Instagram page is only about things that are, that are pink. Only. So this gentleman came out, I think he had an all pink suit on. He was so in on this pink. <laughs> but he, but this is a thing is that he was an influencer and he would have whatever it is like pink tea, pink car, pink Cadillac, whatever, like people, whatever was pink related would hire him because they knew that his audience, guess what his audience likes most of the time. I know this just in pink. Uh, <laughs> that's hard. To, that's hard to understand. So people would, I mean, he was so niche down. He was niche down to a color for God's sake. Like that was, that was his thing. And he found there was plenty of brands and people that wanted to work with him. If they came out with a new pink thing, then that was a person to work with. I mean, I have a, another friend of mine that does rosé wine. So she's very specific. It's rosé wine and everything is about rosé wine. So, you know, we got her on the New York Post and some other some other fun websites. But my point of telling you that is that they were looking for somebody that was really niched down. She only deals with the, with the pink wine. And so when a, somebody comes out with the pink wine, they know who they want to have at the party. They know who they want to do some marketing with. 
that's very specific. You can always, with softwares, and, you know, and also doing the research, you can find the, the perfect influencer for your brand. There's a lot of them out there. Trust me. Yeah. And but the problem is, is what most people don't know is who their perfect client is. So when you go with an influencer, you assume because they have big numbers that that's going to be a good fit. You need to know if you don't know who your client is, then how do you expect to find the right influencer with the right demographic to sell your product or service? Exactly. So that's a big. Yeah. They, you know, and, and the other thing, too, I mean, like any product you're carrying or it may not even be a product, it might be a service, but. You know, you could be selling dog leashes and you find influencers that people that like dogs or certain types of dogs. And you could, I mean, you can narrow down. So it's crazy. <laughs> it is absolutely crazy. I mean, you just do a hashtag search or you go onto these softwares. I mean, I can find dog lovers, dog trainers, dogs, whatever, yeah. dog advocates, uh, you know, whatever that may be. I can find in the Los Angeles area, I can do a search and find 15,000 of them. And that might be off a little bit. Maybe there's 20. I don't know. My point is you can find it. It's out there. Mm -hmm. And there's somebody that's talking about it. And they don't have to have a million people to be able to move the needle. Right. You have to realize, too, it's a frequency thing as well. Don't expect for somebody to put up one picture and for you to go and retire and come to that island that I'm going to be buying here in the next few years. Right? You, you have to realize it. it's going to be a frequency play because people also don't want to – follow influencers that are promoting a different product right. every day. Mm -hmm. Shout out, shout out to Kim Kardashian. Um, <laughs> right. So the idea being is that you want to try to, we're going to get this thing to go viral. If I bring up enough people and then it'll, the news will hit and the people like Shane was talking crazy about Kim K like what? And then <laughs> Kanye West will get involved and this, we're going to really take off you guys. This is, <laughs> this is that episode. Um, so, you know, you, you just you don't want somebody that's promoting a different product each week or whatever that is. And that's another thing as a brand, you have to go and look. And if you're a shoe brand and this person's worked with uh, Nike a month ago and then Adidas two weeks ago and then whatever it is, you know, K-Swiss or whatever yesterday, um, you have to assume there's a reason why these companies aren't continuing with them. Right. right. Either it's their agreement or maybe it's not moving the needle. And so you have to look at that because I you People also is the followership. So when we used to do this stuff with Zoe a long, long time ago, we would hire influencers, right, to, to talk about our product. And they would say, yeah, this content we're going to put out, like, I know that I'm going to lose followers if I put this out, so I have to charge you more. So really what that's saying is every, t you know, that maybe it's not a good fit. Like, if you're, <laughs> I mean, right. And so followers leave and I get that. But it's like, if you think that you're going to lose a person, you know, I think they just did that to raise the price too. But if you're going to lose followership because of it, Wrong it's just something you got to think about, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, there's an issue, there's a potential issue there. Yeah. Well, and you also touch on something, uh, not only is relevance important, but authenticity is yeah. also important that, you know, for a quote unquote influencer that all they're doing is promoting the stuff all the time. Um, yeah, eventually they're, f you know, somebody might follow him for a little while and they go, ah, oh, gee, this is nothing but a great big fat sales channel. Moving on. Yeah, um, 100%. So there has to be some other connection there than the stuff. Well, what, and what makes them authentic? Yeah. Yeah, I thought and, something and was up when I saw Kim promoting uh, x lax <laughs> Just kidding. I'm I know. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to x -Lax. No, I, the thing is, is that there, that is that is a big issue as well because this is the thing is if it if you have somebody that is willing to promote your brand, they're not a good fit, then it's probably about the money, right? And so then mm -hmm. you have to really look at that. Like you shouldn't even reach out to anybody that you don't think is a good fit, right? Why are you like why go to a a, a, a a platform, put in a hashtag, pull a list of a thousand people that you didn't review, and send out um, a thousand emails to people and hey, looking for influencers. You know, the, the analogy that I always use is like, it's like dating. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't just go to, I know I've been married for 15 years, so I haven't had the, the pleasure of Bumble and all the other fun stuff, but I've heard nothing but great things from friends though. Um, <laughs> the, you know, the, the thing is, is, you know, I wouldn't just, I'm assuming I wouldn't go on there and just, I, I wouldn't just put looking for brunettes. I'm assuming I wouldn't, and then send a blanket email to all the brunettes on the profiles and say, Hey, uh, cool guy, big red beard, you know, a speaker teaches at UCLA looking for female companion. I'm assuming that I probably wouldn't get the right types of people because brown hair is not the only thing I'm looking for. Right. I mean, stable and 
not on a lot of medication. I mean, there's other things that we would want to include in my profile, what I'm asking for, right? Being a little facetious. But my point is, is like when you're looking for influencers, really narrow it down, really try to figure out exactly what you're looking for. Because you can go and find any influencer to pick up your campaign for money. That's not a problem, right? But finding the right influencers takes some time. It's not a, it's not an overnight thing that it's just going to happen. You have to do the research. And that's where I think people get confused. Like when you, oh, it's influencer marketing. And it doesn't take that long. Like you just talk to an influencer and you guys agree on a picture and then they post it. Yeah, there's a thousand things that happen before that, that need to make sure that you figured out and that you guys are on the same page with before you go and you start putting this content out there. Mm -hmm. Because guess what, folks? It's still marketing, which means it's still work. It is. That stuff, that work, God, that stuff just work just gets in the way of all the fun. I get it. I get it. I know that second second, the second sec, the second, you say seven second ab. If we can get that down to three seconds, I would do it. I mean, I'm just looking to save that four seconds because the whole work thing, oh, Jesus, yeah. so much time. Well, what I was going to say is, too, is you, that what's beautiful about Instagram is you can negotiate some really amazing deals. I mean, your your cost per acquisition could be minimal at best. I mean, you couldn't touch it with AdWords or anything like that. I mean, yeah, if you know what you're doing. Yeah, and it's and that's the key is it's it really comes down to finding. I mean, there's there's so many different ways to 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 market things, right? And influencer marketing is is one of those tools. It's it really shouldn't be your only tool unless it was like Zoe. We got really lucky because she already had a great platform. She built her platform up. The reason why Zoe sold so well is because she went from zero followers to 180 thousand when she came to us, and she built her her profile off of her journey. First, she was a runner, so she had like no booty. Let's just be honest. I'll explain why I'm saying that. Um, she had no booty. And then all of a sudden she started doing her power lifting and this and working out. And then I, it's what we call her inner JLo popped out like two years later. And the girls <laughs> knew her journey. Like being this skinny girl that was a runner that went to Florida and got a scholarship to two years later, she has this big booty that it was very popular for once again, shout out to Kim K and her whole family, very popular to have the big booty. But before it was like, I got to hide it. Now everybody wanted to see it. And Zoe had that story of like, of everybody saw her journey. And so her audience was very, her authenticity, the, the, she was very genuine. And she talked about her struggles of the things that were happening in her life. And so they, there was a connection there, mm -hmm. right? And so when she came to put out a new ebook or it was Black Friday or something, I mean, she's selling twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 worth of product because people liked her, knew her story, knew that she was very authentic, knew that when we had other companies that would come and pitch us, like, I mean, like the tea guys that would say, Hey, you know, drink this tea and you lose 10 pounds. And then we're like, no, nah, I've drank a lot of tea in my time and I've never lost 10 pounds overnight. <laughs> so we, we wouldn't sell those products, right? Cause Zoe was a, a product. She was a, a influencer, but she was also a brand. So we got pitched on both sides. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, it, and we wouldn't, we wouldn't pitch those kind of products. Cause Zoe's like, we know that doesn't work. Like, why would I even pitch that to my audience? But I can tell you right now, some of the prices that these companies in the beginning were telling us, I mean, we were getting, we would have got 800 to a thousand dollars for Zoe to pick up a picture of something and just take a picture of it and say she uses it. Pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's the amount of work there is nothing like literally just taking a picture and writing up a little caption. So there was plenty of influencers that took that on and lost followership because they were like, I mean, over time, it's like, man, the tease things and all this other stuff that they just don't work. That's how you start to, that's, you're really, you're using your platform, not for evil by any means, but you're using it with the wrong purpose in, in mind. Sure. Right. The I, reason why people follow me is because I talk about marketing and I'm very genuine with I think what I think works and I tell everybody what works and what I think doesn't work or what is working for us. Right. So they understand that if I say, hey, go to this workshop or go do this, like I barely pitch anything because I just don't want to like over pitch. I don't want people to I want them to follow me. And if they want to reach out to me, work with my company or hire me to speak or something, I want them to just just do that. It's not even a sale at that point because they're like, hey, this is the guy we want to work with. Right. Because I, I built that authenticity through my audience. And it's the same thing with this. You can't once you start deviating out of there, like if I started selling, you know, these blue widgets and I was like, hey, go you know, send it to my email list. And hey, buy blue widgets I'm like blue widgets. Like he's never talked about blue. Well, I, I'm talking about blue widgets today. But any other time I'm not talking about blue widgets, then why would you know, it just doesn't make sense to do that. You really have to think about it. Just the common sense thing, which not everybody has it. I think most people were it's in their hard drive. So, you know, just try to use that. And look at it and say, okay, does this make sense? If it doesn't, don't do it. 
Yeah, I'm looking at your Instagram. You look like uh, you have a lot of fun. <laughs> so this is the thing. So my Instagram is funny because my team has actually promoted, and as I said, trying to promote too much. Literally in the last five days, we've promoted my San Francisco that I'm doing thing for agencies like six times or five times. So it's probably a bad one. Usually if you look at my other stuff, I'm having fun in Singapore and I'm, you know, not that I don't work because I do work, but yeah. I just enjoy the kind of like lifestyle, fun pictures and stuff like that. Yeah, I was going to use the picture of you. Uh, kind of looks like you were praying or doing some yoga or something. I wasn't sure what it was, but. So, so that's probably in India. Because um, if I'm trying to do yoga, then then that's that's going to be that's all those yogis out there go like, please do not do yoga because I'm like ADHD <laughs> looking all around. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Where are you from? They're like, uh, really? We're supposed to be like mindful <laughs> in the moment. I'm like, yeah, I was just asking him a few questions and stuff. And he just was totally ignoring me. <laughs> so rude. Um, yeah, I'm not a like I like this is funny. So I did just start Pilates. But the yoga thing, I've always been wanted to do yoga, but that's a whole nother conversation. But yeah, no, that was when I was in India and I had um, a group that I was out there with. They actually brought me like dresses and that's what they're called. And so I like bought, they like, brought me these really nice dresses. So I wore dresses around India. So I'm like six one, nothing weirder than a guy who's six one with a big old red beard wearing dresses in <laughs> India. Like I had nothing but I was walking down the street. I had everybody was looking at me like, that is really weird. Not only is he extremely white um, and he has a big red beard, but now he's also wearing a dress. So I was... <laughs> It was very interesting to say the least. It was fun for sure, though. Nice. Well, we're about out of time. I want to thank you for being on the show, and Michelle, you too. But uh, Shane, I want to thank you for all the uh, information you gave today. Um, I think it's very insightful for people looking to do influence influence marketing and SEO. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. Once again, it was a pleasure being on the show. Yeah. And now, when if people want to get a hold of you, ask you a question, or what's your handles again? Yeah, you can just go my email, and this is my direct email, Shane, that's S-H-A-N-E, at ShaneBarker.com. Um, and then you can go to my website and sign up for the newsletter, follow me on social media and stuff. Um, and then I have like a speaker page that we're doing heavy speaking engagements these last or these next these next few years. So I'm really excited about that. So, Or you can just pay it, you know, a lot of money to UCLA and you can come, come hang out with me for two hours a week and then I can – grade your papers and make sure that you either fail or don't fail. So yeah, no pressure. There. <laughs> yeah. Michelle, did you want to have something you want to add? No, I think this is good. I, I'm already following you on Instagram. So there you go. Yes. And so I gained one. That's all I was looking for. That's perfect. <laughs> and, and I gave the Marina Bay Singapore photo a like. That's good. That's a popular one. That was pretty, that was like, I couldn't believe that thing was like insane. Like when I look at that, I was like, is this even real? Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Yeah. Shane, are you going to be speaking anywhere other than UCLA? Yeah, I've got my event here on Thursday, the hosting one that we're doing with Influencer Marketing Hub. Um, if, in fact, if anybody, this is live, right? So if anybody's hearing this, they can use Shane150 as a coupon so they get $150 off. But we're almost, I think it's almost sold out on that. I'm going to be speaking in Turkey. Um, also, the Midwest was a Midwest conference. If you go to my speakers page, you'll have it up there. I've, okay. I've got about, I'm in negotiations with about eight different events and they all kind of overlap. Um, but it'll be on my speaker page for sure. Nice. And Michelle, where are you, where are you going to be next? So I am headed to Napa, California for the advanced search summit next. Nice. And that's, that's in my neighborhood. That's like, that's right around the corner. We should hang out. <laughs> I might, I might come hang out. I'm always, I'm always down to hang out with some good SEO people. So it's maybe we'll country. connect. It's wine country too. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. You can't go wrong with that. Yeah. All right, guys. I want to thank you again for listening to the show. Uh, big shout out to everyone listening. Thank you for listening. Uh, follow us on ser- on Twitter at searchtalklive.com. Michelle, how do they find you on Twitter? They can find me on our brand pages at Apogee, A-P-O-G-E-E, results. Nice. All right, guys. Thanks again. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Search Talk Live is sponsored by the Robert Palmer family of companies. If you have questions for Search Talk Live or you're interested in being a guest or a sponsor of the show, email Robert at searchtalklive.com. That's searchtalklive.com.